Welcome back to Get Your Sax Together. I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson, and this week's video could possibly be one of the most important videos you'll ever watch because it's gonna cover how you practice your saxophone and what you practice on your saxophone. So let's get straight into it. First of all, don't worry if you can't remember everything that I'm saying in this video, just go down into the description and get your free PDF, which is gonna have all these things written out in a convenient cheat sheet for you. So go down there and grab your PDF. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. And the first thing I'm gonna cover is what to practice. The video is gonna be in two halves. The first half is what you practice, the second half is how you practice. But make sure you stay tuned for the how, because that is just as important as the what. So, first of all, first thing you practice when you get your sax out the box is some long notes. Now, I know it's very boring, you probably don't wanna do it, but if you wanna develop a great sound on sax, you've gotta develop your long tones. Now, the best way of getting a really fantastic, rich tone on sax is to use overtones. If you don't know what that is, you can go up to the card above there, which is linked now to find my video on harmonics slash overtones, and that'll really help your sound come along. So number one is long notes or overtones. That is gonna set up your embouchure and get you really warmed up for the next phase. Second thing you'll practice is scales. <laughs> now scales get quite a bad rap. I have a lot of students that come into the studio and they say, oh, I hate practicing scales. Yeah, I know, it can be a bit tedious. However, we need to be super tactical about how we practice scales. So I've done two videos on the best way to practice scales. The first part of the video is carded up there right now, and then straight after that, there'll be a card for the second video on how to practice scales. But basically, we're gonna start on the note, go right to the highest range you can, go down to the lowest note you can within that scale, and then back to the starting note. And keep tuned, because later on in the how, I'm gonna talk about a certain little device which is gonna transform your scale practice. And it's called a metronome, in case you hadn't guessed already. Okay, very good. That is the second thing you do. So you've got your long notes, and then you practice your scales. Now, you don't have to practice every scale every day. That'll take far too long. So just choose a couple of scales and then rotate them through the 12 keys. The third thing that you practice in your session after long notes and scales is technical exercises. Now, if you're a beginner, that technical exercise might be as simple as going from B to C because you cross fingers and you don't want to get that bobble in the ding, ba ding, ba ding. You want to go cleanly from B, D, 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 and the same in your right hand when you go from F to F sharp. So if you practice those two things, that is an example of a technical exercise for a complete beginner on sax. If you're more advanced, you can use some of the scale patterns from the scales part two video, how to practice scales part two. Or you can choose this exercise, which is linked to a card up there now called how to get faster fingers on sax. And it's a technical exercise that brass players use, which will really increase your finger speed. You take it through 12 keys and you work up your tempo until you can do it really fast. Alternatively, you can just find a pattern that you like or invent a pattern and practice it through all 12 keys nice and slowly until you can really bring your technique on, get your finger speed up and just be a more competent sax player. So far, so good. We do long notes or overtones. We do scales. We do technical exercises to improve our overall sax playing. Now, the fourth thing that I recommend you practice is transcription. Now, transcription seems to be a bit of a mucky word from the sax players who comment on my YouTube channel and from the students I have here in the studio. Nobody seems to do it. And it's one of the most important things you can do as a sax player. It's gonna teach you how to phrase. It's gonna give you a body of phrases that you can use when you're improvising. It's gonna improve your technique. It's gonna bring on your sound as you copy other players. So I highly recommend that you transcribe a little bit each day of your favorite player or your favorite solo. The card is linked right up there on my three-part series on how to transcribe. That'll walk you through the whole process. Just take it from me, <laughs> one of the best things you could ever do is transcribe sax solos. In case there's any confusion, transcribing a solo just means working out exactly how to play it like the original. And then later on you can write it down and you can analyze it and you can get all this benefit from the process. So do a little bit of that as the fourth part of your practice. The fifth part of the practice session is when you get into your pieces. 
or the numbers that you're working on or the songs that you like to play. Now, most people just skip straight to part five. <laughs> don't warm up, don't do long notes, don't do scales, don't improve their technique, certainly don't transcribe anything. So, don't jump straight to the pieces. I know that's the glamorous bit, I know that's the bit you love doing, everyone knows that. But do a little bit, a few minutes on each of the other steps and you will really thank me for that, believe me. But yeah, step five, move on to the pieces. Now this might be a song that you're working on, it might be a solo that you're learning from this very channel, maybe from the Hall of Fame series, lots of cards. Maybe there's too many cards for this video, I don't know. But <laughs> if I've got enough cards to link to the Hall of Fame series, find that playlist, find a song you love and work out how to play it. Or you might have a piece coming up for your school performance, you might have a piece you need to learn for a gig, you might have something in a band that you need to learn. That's all the meat and potatoes of the fifth part of your practice on pieces. Sixth part of your practice is just to have some fun, let loose, play something you love that you already know, that you're comfortable with, maybe put on a backing track, just jam along to something and let your hair down, maybe just a free improvisation, just blow whatever you want. You need to make sure that there's some fun, unstructured time where you just let loose let your creativity flow, and don't worry about how good it is, who's listening, how good your technique is. Just let it all go for a few minutes in your practice session, that's step six. And finally, this is an important step. You must clean your saxophone, take your reed off, swab through the neck and mouthpiece, swab through the body of the instrument. They are very important steps, and yes, another card, I've got a video on how to clean your sax, if I've got enough cards left. So, make sure you clean your instrument after every session, that is non-negotiable, otherwise your smack, your smacks, otherwise your sax will be smelly, and uh, you've got the possibility of infection, all sorts of nasty stuff, your instrument won't last as long, the pads fall apart, oh my god. So yes, please clean your instrument after each session, and put your reed back in a case. All that stuff covers what to practice on sax in your practice session. Hope that really helps. Now we're going to move on to probably the most important part of all, and that is how you practice. So I have four tips on how to practice. There's lots more, but let's just keep it to four, which are going to be the most beneficial for you. The first one is to practice little and often. If you remember nothing else from this video, please remember this one fact about practicing. Practice little and often, because that is the surefire way to connect your brain to your fingers and to imprint the muscle memory of how to play the things. If you just do a one hour practice session once a week, you're not gonna progress as well as if you do seven sessions of a much shorter time. So little and often is the way that you're gonna move forward because each time you go away and you go to sleep, your brain then files that information when you're asleep and then all the rogue little bits of um, sensor information from how you moved your fingers, they get filed into your long-term memory when you're asleep. And then the next day you come back and you find you're better at it. Maybe not perfect, but then day after day after day after day, those neurological messages that connect your brain to your fingers and your mouth and your whole body, they will be solidified and made stronger. So, little and often wins the day. Very important to remember. The second thing I'm gonna recommend about how to practice is isolation. Find the bits that you can't play and then narrow them down to that small segment that you're having trouble with and then very slowly and methodically work on that one bit, building it up until you can play it perfectly. Then join it into the other bit that you can play. For example, if you're practicing scales and there's one bit that you always fluff, don't keep going back to the start of the scale. I see this all the time. Da -da 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 -da, fluff, oops, go back to the start. Da -da 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 -da. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Once you fluff something, stop, go to the part that you fluffed and mend it. Otherwise, those um, brain sort of memories that I was talking about from the, from the previous how-to, they will get imprinted how to do it wrong. Don't practice how to do it wrong, practice how to do it right. And then mend that small piece and then go back to the start and make sure you can weave it into one thing. So that is a super hot tip. That will save you hours of practice time and make it all much more efficient. Number three. <laughs> Nobody's gonna wanna hear this one, but again, it is super important, and that is to practice with a metronome. 
I call a metronome a truth meter because if you think you're playing in time, get a metronome on it and you might be surprised <laughs> how wobbly your time is. So all the stuff that's really structured, do it with a metronome. Do your scales with a metronome. Do your technical exercises with a metronome. If you're learning a particular phrase, which you can't do very well, get a metronome, slow it right down, and then gradually crank up the speed until you can do it. Nothing will help your timekeeping and your accuracy and your technique more than using a metronome. That's super important, use a metronome. And the final tip I'm gonna give you on how to practice, tip four, this is an easy one. Try and keep your sax out on the stand when you're not practicing. Now, I don't mean finish your practice session and put it on the stand, you still have to clean it. But once you've cleaned it, put it back on the stand somewhere where you can see it, maybe it's in your bedroom. Obviously don't leave it somewhere where it might get damaged, like in the middle of the living room where the dog runs past and knocks it over. But somewhere where it's safe, that you can see it because if you see it you're more likely to play it. you walk past oh there's my sax i forgot about that yeah let's have a little blow and if your reed's just there and your and your sling your neck straps just handy you might pick it up and practice and those little micro practice sessions will really start to build up like i said about little and often so if you can see your instrument right there you're more likely to play it. So don't pack it in the box and then put the box in the cupboard because you'll probably never get it out. So that rounds off my four tips on how to practice. Here's a summary of the whole thing. Now, don't forget the cheat sheet is down there in the description. Go and get your PDF. Just click on that. It's simple to go and get the PDF and you will have access to the cheat sheet that you can print off, keep on your music stand and then follow down every time you practice in case you forget. So the points are, first of all, how to practice, number one, little and often. Number two, isolate the tricky bits and practice them on their own before you start going back to the beginning and play the bit you already know. Number three is to use a metronome, painful as it may be. And also don't practice with your metronome at a speed that you can't play properly. Do the metronome at a speed that you can play accurately. And then the fourth how is, to leave your saxophone out where you can see it. And then once you've done all that, the what's are number one, long notes or harmonics, number two, scales, number three, technical exercises, number four, a bit of transcription, number five, you're gonna play your pieces, number six, have some crazy fun, and number seven, of course, clean your instrument. So that's it for this week. Super important video about how to practice and what to practice. Now, if you think I haven't got enough time to practice in the day, if you apply all these things and just do a few minutes on each one, you can really maximize your practice time without wasting a bunch of time. Don't forget, go down into the description to get your free PDF cheat sheet, which you can print off and keep on your music stand at all times. Also, uh, please, if you're enjoying the channel and you're a first time viewer, or even if you're not, subscribe, and click the bell icon, that way you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Go and check out my Instagram account, and I'll see you next time on Get Your Sacks Together. So keep practicing, keep practicing efficiently, <laughs> and I'll see you next week, take it easy, bye.